G'day, just, uh, I've got a question um, on the recent video that I had, which was this one, do um, uh, LPS affect the thyroid? And Paul just asked me about parasites, what type? Um, and then I, I, I just asked him, what type are you interested in? And he just basically told me that he was basically just interested in you know a number of them that uh, a few doctors understand them and stuff like that and you know the sort of issue in their relationship and uh, you know looking at the at the actual literature and all that there's quite a lot of you know work particular when it comes to um you know like animal livestock and people living like in parts of uh, the, you know, developing world around the, the third world or in developing world tribal populations and all that, that are susceptible to some of these sort of things. Um, and I mean, there's, there's not a, there's a, a number of, you know, like milk thistle extract, garlic, number of things that sort of help and all that. I mean, obviously um, things like, uh, you know, when it comes to the Ruteri and some of the lactobacillus type um, bacteria, they help as well in dealing with certain parasites and stuff like that. But when you're dealing with things like worms and certain types of things, um, these organisms um, are Bit much more hardy, much more difficult to combat, um, you know, and and usually they do, they are in, they themselves are infected by viruses and bacteria that are sort of uh, that are being hosted by these worms and sometimes even feeding off them um, and uh, having a sort of a symbiotic relationship and all that sort of stuff. So, you know. Um, it can be much more difficult to sort of target them in that regard. Um, so certain things can, certain things can't um, in that regard. There, there is a, a sort of an antibiotic um, called uh, doxyl cyclene. Um, it's a, um, it's a, um, tetracycline antibiotic um, that sort of can fight these sort of bacteria and all that. I mean, it's just from memory, it's sort of, it's is used for uh, severe acne. Um, it can be used for urinary, urinary tract infections, intestinal infections, respiratory infections, eye infections, gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, uh, periodontal stuff, and a, a number of sort of other things that it's been sort of used. Um, let me just share this study. Okay, so this is a randomized trial of this doxycycline. Um, which is a tetracycline antibiotic. Um, that's how I know it. It's, it's a, this sort of name is a bit of a tongue twister anyway. Um, this is um, Mansonella per tans infection. This is a sort of an African sort of infection. It's quite a nasty one. It's quite persistent, um, very hard to get rid of um, in that regard. And they've used this antibi antibiotic. Um, what they've actually done is they've actually targeted the bacteria inside the actual, um, you know, rather than actually targeting, targeting the worm, there's, there's a sort of a, a, a sort of a symbiosis that exists um, between certain bacterial strains 
And so what they do is they target those and by a ta targeting those, they, they're able to basically, um, and that was the, let me just find it, where is it? Uh, that's not bad. Ah, this is it. So, fertility, vitality, of worms in species that harbor the intracellular endosymbiont Wolbachia. So, so that's the actual bacteria that's actually in there. Um, and so, that by targeting that, which sort of has a symbiotic relationship with the actual parasite, they're able to basically sort of, you know, undermine um, this parasite from, um, because it requires a symbiotic relationship. And that's what this is actually doing and targeting in that regard. I know that a lot of people, you know, try and do sort of natural pathic type, you know, um, ways of you know all these herbal remedies and all that and they really struggle to be honest um to get anywhere to get any real traction um but there are thing other things you can do like um ivermectin so you can combine ivermectin um aldependazole um so a sort of a combination uh, this was done a uh, six months. There is the other one that was actually done, um, which was six weeks. So that was a six week um, thing. Another one that was done in Africa. So there can be differences in that regard. And there are different strategies. This other study here um, has used the same um, doxycycline. Um, it sort of leads to sterility and enhances the killing of the female on on chokerka um volvalis um worms in the areas with persistent microfilaridemia after repeated ivermectin treatment, a randomized placebo controlled double blind trial. So they were using combination in that regard. And you know, they pretty much got a really good result after um, 20 odd months. So some of these parasites are really hard to get rid of. Um, and they do affect, uh, I'm trying to remember the, somebody actually, I think I actually remember seeing it's well over 120 million people worldwide. So, and the good thing is we're getting good p-values as well with these sort of things. So that's that's really important. Um, I'll pin these these things. I mean, I don't regularly focus on these um, these sort of areas of you know parasites and stuff like that. But the person asked me, and I looked took a bit of a peek in the literature. So that was another study um, in that regard. But there is, there is sort of as well, sort of the downside. And uh, this is really important. I mean, some of these, like in this case where they did, uh, you can see the p-values are very high, very good. Anything that is 0 0.000, um, one or two or whatever is really good, um, the, uh, especially these sort of values. The possibility that it's a chance event, you know, the closer it is um, to one, you know, the further away, it means statistically it's less likely. So, you know, total bacteria 0 0.00001 is very high statistical 
relationship that you will lose a lot of bacteria when you use these approaches in that. In this case, they use both um, doxycycline, which is the antibiotic, and also hydroxychloroquine as well in that regard. So things like hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, stuff like that are, are anti um, parasitic. Um, you know, they do combat a number of these parasitic type diseases and stuff like that. Uh, so you can play around um, with the time. Um, one of the African ones that was actually in the villages that was done over six weeks. So that's a month and a half. Um, and after, uh, let me try and was after this damn thing. No, that was after the 12. Yep. Anyway, um, so it was at six weeks from memory, and they were getting, you know, up in the 80 percentile um, sort of uh, results. So this just to give you an idea that, you know, when you use antibiotics, depends the length of time as well. So just let's take a look at these, all bacteria. So when you do the, um, the dosages of these antibiotics, less than three months, you basically, you do have a reduction from, from in regards to the control, but it's not massive. Over three months, you can see things really drop off quite a bit. Um, for all bacteria, the bacterioid, is, which is really important one's been very beneficial. Again, the lactobacillus, they tend to be smaller amounts in our gut. These are the dominant, the firmicutes um, uh, and the bacterioides. These are another, another group. And uh, when we're looking at these sort of beneficial type so the ratio between those two, sort of more balanced, less balanced. So we, we don't want to see that, as you can see. So when you're looking at three months, that's at least four, um, 12 weeks. So, you know, that's not too bad, um, you know, probably at, uh, at, at about probably eight, two months, eight weeks, you're probably going to get really fairly good results with, you know, and I would actually target with a number of these things. So I would use doxychloroquine, um, ivermectin, and um, the antibiotic um, doxychloroquine cycling um, and the reason why I would use the three combinations is to get the biggest bang for your buck without and doing the least damage at the same time to the gut microbiome and then you would look at a protocol coming right out of that um, that would focus on okay I've done my course of two months that's four weeks that's beyond you know and if you're adding, and that was basically just the, the sort of antibiotic, if you're adding these additional components, antiparasitic components, you're actually sort of magnifying the effect to take this, the, to clear out these parasitic um, worms. Um, and that's, the, that's the, the way I would approach it. And then right after that, you know, the thing you've got to do is make sure you use one of the, you know, the, the sort of cleanse that I've talked about, which is the Candida cleanse. Uh, let me just find that for you guys. So, and that's that's important that that we do we do that because um, you know there's always the risk, and you know there is that risk in terms of. Um, you know, vulnerability for candida to sort of overgrow. 
especially when we've uh, you know we've got a very a much lower um, uh, sort of uh, level of uh, you know in in our gut of uh, you know beneficial bacteria so we definitely definitely want to make sure that uh, that basically that isn't a problem now let me just share that So that's the cleanse. You guys have seen it before. Can do a quick cleanse. So that's pretty powerful. So we'll keep that at bay while at the same time, you guys focus on a, a B50 vitamin to basically help and vitamin D to help restore the gut microbiome rapidly again. So that'll be the focus right after. So you do the candida sort of cleanse and then you focus on basically getting your gut microbiome back into, into order. So that's the sort of approach. And this is only if you've got a parasitic situation. Um, we're not talking about people taking these sort of things when they don't have parasitic um, problems. You know, so you need to basically check and make sure. And the, the way you do it is basically you, 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 you give a stool sample gets tested and if there's a parasite there they'll find it and then you know you don't take their shit you basically just take the ask the doctor to give you that antibiotic and you get the ivermectin stuff like that if you if your doctor will prescribe those things yep and do work with your doctor you know this is not um, medical advice this is just basically what the literature says out there what my personal view is and how I would approach it if I found myself in this situation. So do not consider this as medical advice. This is just Harry Sparnas' opinion um, and the best research that I've been able to come across in terms of parasites and parasite management. But you do still need to work with, with a doctor or a naturopathic doctor, with, with um, uh, you know, either one that has an understanding of parasitic um, uh, you know, problems and how to deal with them. But uh, it's giving you a bit of an idea. So at least you can, you know, manage the other components, the candida cleanse, the restoration of your gut microbiome after antibiotics and all this sort of stuff that you need to do to get back to where um, you want to be in that safe, in that safe zone. Obviously, the vitamin D, very important for the tight junctions of the gut um mucosal um, sort of, um, you know, tight junctions of uh, your gut barrier, very important vitamin D, but let's not forget also um, MK4 to basically deal with any issues of die off, which is going to be with that die off, you're going to have quite a bit of um, LPS in the system and that potentially could get into the bloodstream. So if you've got a parasite, you're going to have potentially some issues with your gut permeability already. So you need to basically, pro, um, you know, have the MK4 there as well to provide that cleansing effect, you know, reducing the LPS in your system, in your bloodstream, um, you know, so you can protect your brain and other part, and other organs in your body and reduce that inflammation inflammation load as well so it's all about you know sort of managing these other elements um, together with your doctor to manage the actual parasite um, and uh, to use the appropriate things there are a few other sort of herbal type things like uh, milk thistle and uh, a few other things um, that can actually break down biofilms and stuff like that so you can look at things like that and um but generally speaking the elements that i've spoken about are probably the the key elements that are going to be um going to be useful to really deal 
you know, with a strong sledgehammer approach, but obviously it does have side effects and, uh, um, that need, and consequences. So they need to be mitigated um, with the appropriate steps. Plus another thing is um, if you're a pregnant woman, do not take the antibiotic. It does affect the growth of bones and teeth of the developing fetus. So not a good idea. You may just have to persist with this until you've given birth. And if you are basically um, a young child, um, your parent should make sure um, you know that up until the age of 12, there is still tooth and growth development that can be affected by this antibiotic. So that's another issue in itself. So it's not an easy thing. Um, so it may mean dealing with a slightly different approach, maybe um, a sort of a lower dose or a, or a dose and using some of the other stuff that would require definite, um, uh, you know, we don't have the research it would require a doctor that deals with these things with childhood parasites and knows exactly what to do and what not to do. So I'm not going to provide any opinion on, on children younger than 12 um, at all. You need to get the best professional um, you know, care for those sort of kids because there are side effects um, with this antibiotic so, and that's well known in the literature. Um, I remember reading it ages ago. So it's, you can take that to the bank. Um, I just can't remember the actual study at the moment, but it is um, there. So I would not be taking that risk. So I hope for anyone that's dealing with parasites and all that, that this was of some use. Um, and uh, uh, will help people um, manage such a condition. Just remember, you've got to restore the gut microbiome after with those steps that I mentioned. That's critical. Your B vitamins, your vitamin D, you know, really important that you deal um, with that because there is always potential for, you know, dangerous um, uh, sort of bacteria and other organisms to overgrow. And we don't want that. The other thing is that we need to keep the non-candida or non-fungal issues under control, which is some um, type of uh, uh, bacteria that can be nasty that don't get knocked off with this antibiotic. So those ones, we don't want them proliferating in your gut. And that's where you use the Ruteri that I've already made a video of. Go and check that out how it actually fights off, um, you know, C. diff and a whole lot of other things, um, a whole lot of other parasites. So um, it's really important that you basically take that in conjunction as the protocol that comes right after the obliteration of the actual, um, uh, these parasites. So once you deal with the parasites, then you've got to restore your gut microbiome. You've got to defend your gut microbiome from both candida and other parasitic um, bacteria. And then you need to basically restore your basically gut microbiome um, to all the healthy um, bacteria. So that's really important that you take these proactive steps. So don't forget to do that. Uh, really important. People neglect that once they've done a certain therapy and it can take quite long and it can actually create vulnerabilities for other pathogens to sort of take root in the system. Anyway, I hope this was informative and will help people with dealing with these conditions. Always remember, do take medical advice, show them the information I've shown you, any doctor, if you've got that condition and test, make sure you're testing to make sure that uh, you're not um, that other things that shouldn't be growing in there are growing. So, so you may need to take some additional stools over the year just to make sure that everything's back to normal and in good nick. So that's your side of the um, your management of your own health. 
So do not neglect it. In that first year, as you're coming through, after you've done the therapy, you need to restore and you need to also test to make sure that things are going on track. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that and uh, see you.